I suppose you see, coming from a religious background and being saturated in the religious mystics of both East and West from way back, I don't have a lot of trouble with metaphor if it feels like it's the right one and it feels relevant because it's saying we're all connected, we're all part of the world. Um, so there is very beautiful medieval poetry, for example, which talks about the female mystic's union with the divine lover, and it talks about heat, sweetness, and light. I just don't have any trouble with those quite sexy, sensual terms acting as metaphors for union with God, and nor do I have trouble the other way around. Um, so I think that's probably a cultural distinction I'd need to make, perhaps between you and me. But it, it, it's also an understanding of a metaphor that isn't just, um, it's a perhaps, perhaps metaphor leading us into the unconscious, which is a whole web of connections, a universe of connections. And that writing about sex or bliss, say, can web into a web of metaphors that is so profound, so complicated, so beautiful. Um, I just don't have any trouble with it. There's a medieval poem called The Pearl, and it just riffs, you know, for many pages over what a pearl might be. And I think that's become very foreign to, to, to modern Western culture, and it's a difficulty for some people, and it obviously doesn't work for you. Well, I suppose I would just trust in my experience of reading. Sure. And if, if for 10 minutes I believe that women have pearls, and lettuce gardens, which is we're hearing about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and secret gardens. I'm quite happy to allow those symbols to speak to me suggestively and to inhabit my dreams and to stay with them, not knowing, not understanding, not being rational. So I'm probably invoking here, necessarily for me, the power of the irrational in um, writing about sex.